sorry, let me see. Hey everybody, welcome to Fab Fit Friday. Today what I want to do is give you some tips to sew on knit fabric because last week when I was sharing my jeans, um, PG had a question about, um, you know, embroidering on knits. And I'm happy to say I tested one of my floral designs on a piece of knit and it really stitched out pretty well. So I'm going to show you that and then I'm going to show you a couple new designs that I made um, to share with you today. Um, Alright, so some of the challenges with sewing on knit fabric is you're working with a fabric that stretches. So you don't want to pick a design that's really dense. Hi, Samina. Um, thank you for joining me. I think it's just like you and me. There aren't very many people on right now, so um, that's, that's okay. Thank you for coming. I felt like I was talking to myself for a second here. Um, all right, so you want to pick a design that's um, not super dense, but that's not to say that you couldn't embroider on a knit fabric with a dense design. You would just have to really up the stabilizer. So let me just stop. Hi, Janie. Hi, Glenda. Oh, from Minnesota. Welcome. Okay, so I'm kind of excited. The first thing I want to do is let me just give you an update on my jeans project because I really thought I was going to be, I had a mission for these jeans and I really thought I was just going to be able to embroider them like in a weekend and be done with it. But actually when I'm working on a big project like this, I think I need to like step away and give it some breathing room and then come back and think about it because embroidering a whole garment is really a process. So I was embroidering like a maniac and then I realized it was kind of going in the wrong direction um, from what I had in my head. So let me show you where I am on there first and then we'll get to some of the um, knit embroidery. Alright, so this is the leg I was working on and I showed you how to do the front pocket. Um, and last week I showed how to do some of this decorative stitching. Hi Mary! Thank you for joining me. I'm so happy to see you. Um, and so I wanted to put some subtle decorative stitching in the background of the fabric just to really texturize it. And as I got going with it, I decided to curve it in. So I think you guys can see like there's this subtle candle wicking stitching that does this. And then I got the brilliant idea that I could be decorative stitching on this side if I started embroidering on this leg. So I had two machines going and I was embroidering over here. Okay, so this is, I just, these are the side seams. I'm just putting them together so you can see that I'm trying to make this um, asymmetrical. Like I don't want my embroidery to match on both sides. So this is how far I've gotten on the second leg up at the top. And I like to fold my leg in half like this because then I can see what's gonna show in the front, you know, versus the whole thing. So if I open it up, so if I open up this one, you can see I've got stuff starting in the back. Um, and on this one, I just started embroidering across the side seam. Okay, so you can see it's doing that. Okay, and that's all I have done on this side. Um, but then on the bottom, I did some embroidery on the hem. Okay, so these are in progress and I'm going to continue on with it um, when the mood strikes me. I decided I'm going to stop forcing this project. I really, um, I'm going to give it a little bit of a break and then when I look at it again, maybe I'll come up with some direction for exactly what I want to do here. Um, hi, Serene. Welcome. Um, all right, so let me put that away. I'll keep you updated on this as I work on it. But today's topic really is more about stitching on knits. And I decided I would make some new designs to work with. Let me just make it a little less bright. Hold on. Okay. 
Okay, so these designs that I made um, specifically for knits, you can see they're very open. And I played with some of the, the fills to make them, some of them are slightly more dense than other areas, but um, this is a very open design. I've already washed it, so you can see it still will have some stretch with the fabric. So the first thing you want to think about is if you're going to embroider on a knit, you know, what do you want that knit to do after it's done, um, after you're done with the embroidery? If you expect it to still have some stretch, you need to pick out designs that um, are very open and have give. Like see this one will stretch, um, you know, just as much as the knit probably did without hampering it at all. And actually, this is just, this is a cut work I did. So I'm going to show you how to do that today, actually. Um, but on the back, you can see I've already washed away the stabilizer, and my machine is having some little tension issues here, so just ignore that. But the point is, this is nice and smooth in the back. It's nice and smooth in the front. Um, and these designs are, you know, really lightweight. So that's what you want to look for. Um, designs that are not super dense. Um, all right, and then I, like I said, I tested a design. This is one of the designs that's on my jeans, and I tested it on this knit, and it actually stitched out pretty nicely. So it's a little bit more dense than these, but you can still see the fabric through the fill on the petals. So as long as you have, um, you know, the right amount of stabilizer under it, you can um, stitch it. But what I want to show you here is, you can see along this satin stitched base right here, it's the fabric is starting to pucker. And that's what will happen um, if you try to embroider a knit with something a little bit more dense, you get these puckers. Okay, and I used two layers of um, wash away on this, and that was not enough to keep it from puckering. So even though the petals are lightweight, anything with like a heavy satin stitched fill is going to be too much for a knit unless you stabilize it in a way where it can't move. And let's talk about that. Um, Okay, so I have some examples of stabilizer here. I had one of those old sul sulky stabilizer kits, and I thought this would be a perfect way to show you a variety of stabilizer um, and how it would work, specifically how it could work with knits. Um, sometimes with knit fabric, in addition to you know putting stabilizer in the hoop underneath, you may want to put a topper uh, on top of the fabric and one of the stabilizers that works really well for that is Sulky's, Sol it's called Solvi and this actually lays on the top of your um, embroidery and what it does is it helps the stitches form correctly before they start sinking into the nap of the knit or you know the the sponginess or the the you know the soft knitted surface of a knit fabric this will help the stitches form nicely, and then you just tear it away and it washes away completely. So Sulky makes that in three different weights. This is the, the lightest one I would use for a topper. And then there's one that's um, Super Solvy is a little bit heavier. Um, you can still use it as a topper, but this you can also use this as a backing at this point. And then they have Ultra Solvy. This Ultra Solvy is white because it's old. The new Ultra Solvy would be clear like these two, but Ultra Solvy you can use to make standalone lace. Okay, so those are things that completely wash away. And then the fabric that I'm using in the hoop, um, Solvy calls it, I mean, uh, Sulky calls it um, Fabric Solvy. Um, OESD calls it Aqua Mesh, I believe. You can get this from a lot of different manufacturers. It looks like a non-woven interfacing, but it washes away. And this is really, I think, the cornerstone for embroidering with knits. Now, you can get this in two different um, 
ways. You can get this as a, a just a stabilizer like this, or you can get it in a you can get it as a sticky, um, and this is what I use to embroider the samples I just showed you. You can see there's a paper backing here that you peel away once it's in the hoop, and then it's sticky. And sticking your knit onto your stabilizer is really the best way to hoop your, your knit fabric because you're not squeezing it in between the hoop. And I'll show you that in a minute, um, how that works. But using the aqua mesh or the fabric solvi in the uh, adhesive brand, um, with the adhesive, I think is the ultimate way or the best way to embroider knits. Because not only are you working with a non-stretch stable interfacing, it's also adhered onto that interfacing so it can't stretch as you stitch. So that would be my number one way to um, embroider knits. Now another thing you can do is you could use um, a, a stabilizer call, called Soft and Shear or you know, it's probably called other things by other manufacturers, but it's a very sheer stabilizer, and you cut away around the edges. And for this kind of stabilizer, the only downfall is it's permanent. It does not wash away. So whatever, you know, however closely you trim, the entire surface of that embroidery is going to be completely non-stretch. So if you're working on a garment that that's made of knit fabric, but it doesn't need to stretch, um, this could be a good option, but just keep in mind it stays there and it comes in black as well. Um, and then you've got your cutaway fabric, I mean your cutaway stabilizers um, that are a little bit firmer. This is so, um, a cutaway plus. It's got some you know, thickness to it. It's gonna provide really good stability for designs. But again, it's really chunky, and I think you'd see the um, you'd see it underneath your knit fabric. It would look like almost like a stiff board um, when you cut away. And then there's I mean there's there's lightweight tear away. You could use that too, I guess. But really, um, I think the best option is to use the either the aqua mesh or the aqua mesh with the um, adhesive. So what I want to do now is just show you, I had made a smaller version of this cutaway flower. So I thought what I would do is show you how to stitch it out and then cut it away. And I think what I'll do is I'll put um, a link below this video later. So if you want to hop over to my website and um, download it. I'll just put it up there as a free design um, because it really only took me like a couple minutes to make and actually the up the updated version has um, candle wicking. So this is what it looks like after you wash it. This is what it looks like the one we're going to stitch out. I made it a little bit smaller and I use candle wicking stitches instead. So you can see this is what the aqua mesh looks like before it's washed. I just cut away to get it out of the hoop. But you can see that's nice and flat. There's no puckering. Um, and this is kind of a cool, you know, it adds texture to, um, you know, to your design or the surface of your knit fabric. So that's kind of a fun thing. So I'm gonna put this as a free design and I'll put a link for it underneath the video later. I just have to make all the formats and get it organized in my online store and then I'll put a link for it. So. Um, come back and look for that later. You know, probably by tomorrow I'll have that up for you. But that's a free design you can try. Um, and let me just show you how easy it is to embroider. All right, so I'm going to take a piece of the aqua mesh, okay, and I'm just going to cut it off, you know, the width I need. And then I'm going to. I'm going to hoop my stabilizer. Okay, I'm not hooping my fabric because if you hoop your fabric, um, sometimes, I didn't hoop this. 
sometimes if you hoop your fabric, you get um, like like shiny stretch marks in your knit. Um, and I had some on here. I did hoop one of these designs because I wanted to show that to you. But then when I washed it, it went away. So I guess you could, I mean, I guess you could hoop your fabric, but um, sometimes the, those stretch marks caused by being squeezed in between the hoop don't disappear. So um, I like to just stabilize my, I mean, I like to just hoop my stabilizer. And you want it in there so it's pretty taut, okay? Oh yes, Mary Mary says hoop burn. Yes, you can get hoop burn. Um, but interestingly, like I said, I tested this knit. I think I hooped it when I was doing this one. And there was some hoop marks I was gonna show you, but then they're gone now. So sometimes when you wash your garment or your knit fabric after you embroider it, it goes away because I don't see it um, anymore. Okay, so this is all set. Now, if you do not have um, the adhesive version of the Aqua Mesh, you can use something called a 505 ad Temporary Adhesive Spray. This will adhere the knit onto the stabilizer. And I'm just gonna spray it under my table because I have some paper set up. Just need a little bit. And then I'm just gonna take a piece of this knit and I'm just gonna smooth it on. And you can see, I'm not gonna stretch the knit. I'm just gently gonna smooth the fabric into the hoop. And you can see now, see, it's very um, nicely and securely in the hoop with that 505 spray. And it's gonna stay with the stabilizer now and that's gonna help it from stretching. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my machine. Let me just change my view here, as you can see. This is my antique 2170. Um, I've had this machine for probably 20 years, but it still works really, really well. So I'm going to stick this hoop in the machine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a second piece of knit. And I don't need it to be a huge piece. I just need it to be, you know, big enough to cover the design area. Um, then I'm just going to go over here and pick out the design. I already have it loaded into my machine here. Okay, so this is the design we're gonna do. And I'm gonna put this fabric um, under the needle, and then I'm going to baste in the hoop. Let me just put this more like this. All right, so when I baste in the hoop, that's gonna be an added safety um, because it will hold the two layers together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to baste in the hoop. Okay, so now those are all held together. And then I'm going to just stitch the design. And this is a really quick design. Um, it will only take a couple minutes to stitch out. So, um, oh, and of course, all right, I'm gonna change threads here. Hold on, that spool is almost empty. Let me, let me just back up. All right, let me just thread this again. This should be 
that should work out fine. All right, so while that's stitching, um, does anybody have any questions about um, embroidering on knits or something you were hoping I would cover or something you've tried that's worked well? Um, you, know, you can share your secrets if you have anything that you want to share with our little group today. already almost halfway done. Um, Mary asks, um, where would you place this design on a shirt? That's a very good question, Mary. Um, let me just, um, So I've been actually thinking about um, designing a, a shirt. So here are my sleeves, my armholes. Here's my... Okay, so I was thinking of putting these um, floral designs kind of down the side. like down one side, you know, and maybe having it go to the back as well. Um, you know, and maybe, I don't like things like around my face when I embroider, so keeping it down here I think would be kind of cool and it could actually wrap around to the back, you know, on the side. So that's what I was thinking for this. And um, the other thing I'm thinking of doing is using this one, even though I designed it for knits, I was thinking maybe on my jeans, I could use it to help make a background to then put other designs on top. Um, and I know this isn't um, working with knits, but if I made the design I'm showing you now um, out of a lightweight piece of denim, when you washed it, it would fray and it would make a really cool design. So, um, I really want to play with these in a bunch of different ways, but if I had these designs, big ones and little ones, you know, all along the side of a shirt, that's what I'm thinking um, as a design placement. You know, maybe I'll get that going over the weekend because that's something I can do, you know, in a day. All right, so once this is done, then all you have to do to um, finish it is, I like to take it out of the hoop because it's easier to trim. So I'm just going to go behind here and I'm going to dig my basting stitches out. And then once that's done, I can just remove my basting stitches and I cut around the hoop, around the stabilizer, because this stabilizer is pretty expensive. So um, let me just put this more like this. All right, there we go. Um, I like to patch the hole when I do my next one to save stabilizer. So I'm going to cut this really close to the edge like this. Okay, so now I just have this hole here, and so I can take one of my scraps, like I can take a scrap of this, and I can patch the hole to get the most use out of um, this stabilizer, and I can use my, my adhesive spray to adhere the scrap of stabilizer in the hoop, and that way I'm not you know, wasting, you know, all of the stabilizer just on one design. So that's how I would economize my stabilizer. Um, and then 
for this design, I'm going to cut around the edges first. You know, and I try to get pretty close. And then once I get it going, um, if you hold the, you know, if you hold the tail that you're, you've got started, then it's pretty easy to snip around. Just, you gotta be careful not to snip the, you know, your under or your garment fabric. But you just, you know, clip around. And then I just clip close to both sides, and that's how I get the finished look. But you can see, if you take something that's phrase, you can do this, and it would make a fringed flower. See, so you just cut it away like this. But I like the look of the um, I like the look of the candle wicking stitch better than you know this the what the first one I did I just used a straight stitch so I kind of like the look of this candle wicking you know and then you would just cut it out like that Let me just see something here. See if I can make a better view. All right, so let me just cut this. I'm not going to cut the whole thing. I just want to show you that you know you can just cut around. You know, then when you get the whole outside done, then you go inside. All right, so I've gotten rid of the whole outside now. So then I'll start over here, and I just poke my scissors in and make a snip on the surface knit and stick my, you know, the sharp part of my little scissors in there and just start trimming around the edge. Like that. See? So that's going to add some nice texture to the design. Alright, so I'm not going to take my time, I'm not going to take the time to show you how to. Um, you know how to cut apart the whole thing but you can see it just it makes a nice you know it just makes some nice texture so you just go around and then you would end up with this and really if I was stitching it without trying to show you at the same time it really only took about five minutes to trim that all away okay and then when you wash it it'll get some nice you know some nice waviness and the, the little edges of the knit will fray a little bit and it just gives it that you know kind of a cool kind of texture um, so that's really what I wanted to talk about today I've only been talking for half an hour does anybody have any other questions about the kind of stabilizer um, I think if you're gonna use a topper like if you're gonna work with a topper and a backing, I don't think you need to have a stretch needle. Um, I'm actually using a universal size 14 needle in my machine because a universal needle is um, slightly, a slight ball point, so it's not a super sharp needle. So a lot of times when you're working with knits, um, and unless it has a really loose weave, with a surface that has a lot of little threads it can catch on. A universal needle works pretty well. Um, but, you know, certainly I would look like if you, if you're thinking of, you know, working with knits and you'd like to find designs, just put in, in your search, like you can go to embroideryonline.com. Um, OESD has a lot of nice designs. But if you put in lightweight or featherweight designs, you'll come up with 
designs that are not super dense. So that way you can stitch on them without making like a bulletproof stabilizer situation because if they're much more dense than this, like the example I showed you with the other design, the minute you start to get some, you know, some thicker fill, it's going to pucker. Oops, I'm sorry. It's going to pucker unless you have a lot of stabilizer. So um, my, my go-to again would be the Aqua Mesh or um, the one that looks like a you know, non-woven stabilizer or interfacing. Um, use one or two sheets of that and then pair it with a topper if you think you need to have, if you need to protect the surface of your fabric, just add a topper. You know, so use like the, the Sulky Solvi on top and that will help your stitches um, sit nicely on your knit. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I think I will maybe get a shirt going and I will embroider, maybe I'll use these designs um, on that so you can see you know, how I would actually use them. Um, so that's my, that's my report for today. Does anybody have any questions about embroidering on knits? Anybody? All right, so if nobody has questions, I think I'm going to call it a day. Um, it's beautiful weather here. It's kind of cool. I think this is our first, um, you know, our first real fall feeling day of the year was today. I got up this morning and it was like actually nippy outside. So, um, you know, I'm going to hopefully get out and do some yard work and go hiking and... Um, have a nice weekend. I hope you guys are all safe and sound. Um, and I hope, um, you know, and the other thing I want to say, I guess, is I really appreciate that you found me here because my Facebook situation, I don't think it's ever going to get straightened out. My account was hacked and it's still hacked. And there's a lovely Vietnamese company selling Vietnamese products from Vietnam on my J Stern Designs page. And every time I look at it, it makes me nuts. So, I'm going to just move everything over to my Fab Fit Friday to um, my YouTube. And if you're on Instagram, I also have my Instagram where I'm posting my pictures and updates and that kind of stuff. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's kind of short for a Fab Fit Friday, but um, I just wanted to give you tips for sewing on knits. And um, please let me know if you have any questions or comments. You know, I'll help you. And I will put a link to this design as soon as I make it in all the formats um, and get it in my store. So that will be a free thing for you guys for joining me. So have a nice weekend and I will see you next week for another Fab Fit Friday.